Welcome back everyone. It has been a while since my last video. Got a little 2020 there, but with the recent speed train of generative AI, I felt like I had to get back in here and let you all know some of my favorite tools for presentations to help you stay on the leading edge and add some major, major spice to your work. There is so much to cover from chat GPT to AI enabled imagery, music, video, voices, so much out there. So today I'm going to show you three different tools to help you break, edit, and replace parts of your imagery so that you can really make your presentations come to life even more. Let's turn any illustration or icon you have into an editable vector image like this. To do this, we open up Vectorizer AI. Let's grab this image here, which is a JPEG of these flowers that I found on freepeg.com. Just drop it in and then hit OK and then it's going to process for a little bit. Looks like it worked, so just go ahead and hit download. And it's going to give you some options here. Let's stick with an SVG format. And then this is the other one that I want you to pay attention to because these give you slightly different results. And I'll show you that in just a bit. So from here, we go to download. And let's see how we can drop it into PowerPoint. Perfect. Now we hit either convert to shape here, or I like to do it the old fashioned way, which is control shift G and then yes. And then boom, it turns your, your image into a bunch of editable shapes from here. I can, for example, take this background out. I can modify the color of the flowers. I can do pretty much whatever I want. Now here's an explanation of this shape stacking feature that I mentioned I'd tell you about. The biggest difference when you stack shapes, which is the option that I would recommend, is that when you pull out any of the pieces, there's no outline here. But if you use the place shapes and cutouts option, then when you pull apart the shapes or the flower in this case, you can actually see the outline of the flower. Typically, that's not something that I personally want. So that's why I always use the stack shapes option. So that's the first tool. Let's go to the next one, which is being able to trace any image, even photos like the one that I showed at the beginning of this video. And you can do this with the segment anything model from Meta. Let me show you how with this demo. So go to demo here and then say, yes, I've read the conditions, etc. And you're going to have a bunch of demo images here. And I'm going to just show you one of these and then we're going to upload our own as well. So if you go here, let me scroll down to my favorite one, which is this really cool salad here. And I love this image because it has so many small pieces here. And if you want to take an image and just automatically break it into a bunch of little pieces, you go to everything here and it's going to go ahead and scan this whole thing and it's going to identify which are the little pieces inside of it. And once it's done scanning, the cutouts or the shapes are going to pop up individually. Here you go. And you can see that all of these little pieces from the plate to each one of these pieces of food, every leaf, every little chickpea is here as well. So, and here comes the, the really fun part. Each one of these pieces can then be brought into PowerPoint. So let's grab this one here and we're going to right click and then hit copy. And then from here we open PowerPoint and then we hit control V to paste and then boom, it's right there. 
and then I can bring in the rest of the pieces of the image as I like as well. That's what I did when I was making my intro video with, with my face and all the cutouts. So let's actually take a look at that right now and how I made that. If we go back to demo over here, I can then, instead of using one of the demo images, I can upload an image of my own. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll find my face. So this was the first frame of my, my video where I was talking. I actually did everything just like you saw in the chickpeas, but just to show you something different, I'm gonna show you how to add a mask so that just my kind of face and body is highlighted. So if I do add mask and then I click on my face here, let's see, that should show up and cut out my entire, there we go. It cut out my entire face and shoulders. And then from here, I go to cut out object. There it goes. And from here, I just go to copy image and let's paste it on top of our chickpea here. Perfect. So you can see how easy it is to go from that tool right back into PowerPoint. Super, super easy. And here's kind of how I used this cutout method for the front end of my, of my video. I actually had this reference image back here. This was originally sent to the back so that I can put everything on top of it. All of these images, they kind of came out with, with the way that the cutouts were. And then you can kind of, I took all of these pieces, I put them back together, almost like a puzzle. Let me put that back. And then I animated them as you can see here. So a great way to cut out images really quickly for both editing and animation purposes and a way to do it very, very quickly so that you can speed up your workflow as well. So what if I now want to take an image cut out and then animate it on top of the background image. Now, of course, if I kind of segment out everything, cut everything out, there's gonna be a gaping hole. But what, what I was actually able to do is seamlessly animate it. So it kind of animates right on top of the background. There's no hole and this helps support my storyline in my presentation. Now, how did I do this? I used a technique called in-painting. It is really the ability to uh, take out a piece of an image and replace it with something else. And you can do that in a variety of different programs. I'm gonna show you Dali and Adobe Firefly in just a bit. Now, this is a slide taken from a webinar that I did a while ago. And what I wanted to, to show with this photo, which was created in Mid Journey, by the way, is uh, a person who is really happy to be sitting next to a robot. <laughs> but for some reason, her face turned out not so happy. So what I did, because I really like the rest of this image, is I did in painting just to kind of change uh, her facial expression here. Um, so let's make her a little bit more energetic and uh, <laughs> let's in paint her face to make it to, to kind of change that that expression. So I opened up uh, Dali here and I'll put a link to it in the description as well. And what I do is I go to upload an image and I uploaded the, the image of the, the girl and the robot. And then from here... I will, I put woman face smiling and happy. And then I have to select the area that I want to erase and then recreate it with this prompt. So this is exactly what I did. And let's see what we get. Hit generate. <laughs> so out of the different choices, uh, this is uh, the first one that came out. I also got a second choice here. I'll show you. Um, this is kind of a video of the different ones that I got. Here's the second one, third one, kind of scary, and fourth one. I actually really liked the second one, and that's the one that I kept because the woman looks really happy. 
uh, but not outwardly creepy. <laughs> so that's the one that I chose. Now, one thing to note is that Dali exports your, your final images as this 1024 by 1024 square. So you have to then go back and overlay that on top of your original image. Adobe Firefly, by the way, doesn't have that constraint, but we'll take a look at that in a little bit as well. So as a result, I was able to turn her face here into that, uh, that new face and it's super seamless. It completely blended in and I removed the Dolly uh, watermark here. So it looks completely brand new. And if you want to use Adobe Firefly, you can do that as well. It's in beta right now. We have a bunch of different tools here. I'm not going to go through all of them, maybe in a future video, but the one that we use here in painting, they call it the generative fill. So then you can just click on that and then upload your image and then do um, the same type of erasing and filling in as we just saw. And by the way, they also have text to image similar to mid journey here. And then they also have text effects, which is a really cool feature as well. Um, so definitely check this out as well. I'll put this in the description too. All of the tools I'm talking about today are free or give you a bunch of credits to start in a free trial, but there is a small caveat. Anything you put into these AI tools can often be used for training purposes. So definitely don't put anything like massively proprietary code or any like patent information or, you know, something super top secret in here. Just use it on things that are much more open. Well, hopefully that was a helpful glimpse into the world of generative AI for your presentations. There is so much more to cover, including music, video, more stuff with images, and creating digital versions of yourself. Let me know what you're interested in most out of this massively changing landscape. If you like this video and this was helpful to you, please comment, like, and subscribe to see more content like this and see you in my next video.